Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox Graphics and we're back with another video, this time a sort of cinematic camera movement with um, a spotlight. And this is a really cool effect if you wanna do a sort of like photo slideshow for maybe a bridal or a wedding event video or maybe like a documentary. So um, I thought this looked pretty cool. I used it in one of my past projects. So I'm just gonna show you how this was done all in After Effects. But before we get started, I just wanna give a quick word to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. What you find might just surprise you and inspire you. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life, so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. Whether it be discovering your passion for design, animation, or 3D modeling, there's a series for you, like these great classes by Jake in Motion. As an engineer and designer, I'm always looking for ways to improve my productivity and build sustainable life habits. That's why I'm watching Thomas Frank's series on real productivity. Anything you want to learn, you can do so on Skillshare. Not to mention, it's also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is just less than $10 per month. Click the link in the description to get two months free of premium membership and explore your creativity. Anyways, thanks again for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so jumping here into After Effects, you could see our kind of camera move. And uh, I, I thought that this is a fairly convincing look in After Effects. I mean, it's pretty clear these are 2D layers, but if you consider that um, this is all in After Effects and not like Blender or something like that, I think it looks pretty realistic. Anyways, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm not gonna show you how I did all of these photos yet. Um, I'm gonna put that at the very end. So if you wanna see how I how I added like the text and stuff and the borders, I'll show that at the very end. But in the beginning, we'll just show how we set up this scene. So that way, if that's what you're here for, you get quick right to the, right to the tutorial. So I'm just gonna start by creating a new composition. Composition new. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is fine. 30 seconds is good, the longer the better, 25 frames per second is perfect, so I'm just gonna hit okay. I do have one layer here, it's kind of very long, it's got a very long name, but basically if I hit R on the keyboard and rotate this 90, and then scale this down by hitting S on the keyboard, you can see it's basically just a marble texture. I just needed some sort of texture as my table. You could use wood, there's all different types of textures, but this one was free, so I decided that I'll use this one. And I'm going to make this a 3D layer and I'm going to add a layer new camera. Just hit okay. And layer new light. And I'm gonna choose spotlight and hit okay. First things first, if this wasn't a 3D layer, you wouldn't see the spotlight. So that's important. Um, in the material options here, which let me just rename this by hitting enter and typing in table. You can adjust some of these settings on the table like diffuse and specular, if I can manage to grab it. The problem really is, is After Effects isn't really great at, at any of this stuff. So if you change it on one layer, but you don't change it on other layers, it doesn't blend light the way that kind of maybe Cinema 4D or Blender would do. So I recommend just leaving these all the same and just kind of make sure you hide the spots that it doesn't quite look right in the sense that the layers maybe aren't of this right properties. So with that being said, we could start um, adjusting our spotlight. So I'm just going to open this up and go under light options. The first thing I do is, is I increase the feather. Um, one thing about spotlights is they can be very harsh and I'm just gonna increase the cone angle until the whole thing is lit. And now I'm gonna start dropping in my images. So I'm just gonna select all of these images, um, all of my layers, which um, I'll show you what they are right now. But first let me make sure they're all 3D layers by hitting that cube, hit S on the keyboard and scaling them all down. So the first, ooh, okay. One thing to note, see how blurry all of this is? It's because since we are using a camera, it does have a focal distance. So while I go through this, let me just show you um, how I would adjust the focal distance. I would maybe change the 
to top view. And you can see here on this camera layer, this line here is the focal distance. With that, there is our table. So let me just open up the camera here and go to maybe transform, no, I'm sorry, camera options. And increase the focal distance so it's pretty close. This isn't gonna be permanent, so we can make adjustments later, but just so everything's in focus. So you can see one, I call this Earth layer. This was a Voyager space probe artwork that it was sent out to space. I've got a logo layer. I've got one photo, two photos, um, and then the rest are just photos. So make those all visible. I'm gonna drag them all underneath my camera just so my layers are all correct. And now I'm gonna start basically moving these layers around and um, scaling and rotating them and pretty much create a table setup. So Earth is gonna be on the bottom um, and I'm just gonna kind of hit S on the keyboard, maybe scale it up, hit R on the keyboard, rotate it a bit, just to make it look a bit random. Um, my logo is probably the least important. I'm actually gonna drag that to the bottom. That's gonna be somewhere over here. Not quite sure where yet. So just gonna move these around and we'll be right back. Okay, so I have all of my images kind of laid out on the table, and now let's start moving this camera into its first position. So I'm gonna just hit P on the keyboard, set a keyframe, R on the keyboard, set keyframes for all of those rotations, um, open this up. We're gonna be making some adjustments to the focal distance and the aperture, and um, I think that that's it. So I'll just hit you on the keyboard. Actually, you know what, before I do the camera stuff, let me show you how to get some neat shadows on these layers. Um, but let me show you the drawback of the shadows built in After Effects. So I'm just gonna select this image here and open this up and go to Material Options and go to Cast Shadows and set that to On. Now with certain lights, the cast shadow works pretty well, but let me show you what happens when you use Spotlight. When you pull this up, that shadow is like, you know, as black as you could possibly get, and it's super harsh. So for this case, since these images are just sitting on a table, the shadow is like very minor. So what I'm gonna do instead is just do a drop shadow. This obviously wouldn't work in all cases, but in the cases that we have here, I think it's gonna be just fine. So let me show you which settings I would use. Um, the base settings are pretty close, though I would change the softness maybe to something like two, and maybe the opacity down to like 30, and just increase the distance maybe to eight. You obviously don't want a ton of distance, but that just adds just a tiny, tiny bit of depth to the table that might not be there otherwise. So obviously softness is maybe 20 with a distance of maybe like two. Obviously, you know, you just mess around with these settings, but it just adds just a slight amount of depth. So I could just copy this drop shadow and paste it on all of my layers. Might need to adjust it per one, but actually I think that that's probably about right. They're all about the same size. And then the next thing I'm gonna do for some of these vintage photos is I'm gonna add a rough in edges. Um, but I'm gonna make sure I put the rough and edges above the drop shadow or else you get some really weird settings. So let me kind of show you what the rough and edges is doing. It's basically kind of tearing the edges of the paper, which looks really cool, especially with the drop shadow. Depending on how much you want, you just wanna adjust the border. I obviously don't want a ton. You can increase the scale to maybe smooth it out a bit, but um, you just kind of wanna mess with these settings. I want something not quite that big, maybe set that to 20. And that kind of adds just a little bit of texture to the end. And I'm gonna do the same, just copy that, Control C, and paste it onto my other layer. Okay, so now we can officially start adjusting the camera in the shot. So hit you on the keyboard, get all of my settings back up, and let's start messing with these settings. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to four view. 
That way I could better judge where my camera is while also seeing with the active camera. So the tabletop, if I select the table, you can see is right there. So we want this to be much closer to the table. And we want it to start on this end of the table, but we want to rotate the camera so it's in so it's kind of like really flat up against the table. Um, obviously, we're gonna have to do some rotation, but we want this to be really close to the table. So I'm just keeping an eye over here just to see if I'm coming close, which I think that that's pretty close. This, by the way, is like more like a, a sign an art than a science. Like you just have to like just keep adjusting the settings until the angle looks good to you. So taking this here, I could kind of pull this over and I want again to be over this photo first. Using all of the tools in my repository to get this as close as possible. So you can see here that we're losing some stuff there on the end. I could hit S on the keyboard on this table layer and since it's 4K, I've got a lot of room that I could actually expand this. So let me just set this to like 100 and that helps us a lot. Okay, so I think that that looks actually pretty good. So, okay, so I'm back to where my camera angle is. This is very similar to what we started with um, in the other, in the kind of sample. I'm gonna go to 20 seconds and I'm gonna set all of these back to their original state. So it started at 960 by 540, maybe zero. Zero, 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 zeroed out. The reason why I do this is because once the camera starts like rotating and stuff, it becomes very difficult to know exactly what any of these toggles are gonna do, especially when you're only in one view. When you're in the four view, at least you can kind of manipulate it. But when you're in the one view, you start rotating these things, these layers are going places you, you didn't you didn't know um, even existed. So I wanted to end obviously on the logo here. I'm gonna give myself some proportional grids and just move the camera into position. And now we can take a look at our first camera movement. Hit S on the key, Control S to save and maybe bring this down to a quarter. I think we need to move some of these images. I don't think they're they're in the perfect position but that looks pretty good to start with. So this image here, I'm gonna bring it maybe a little bit closer to the camera and I'm just gonna scrub through this and make sure all of these images are appropriately placed. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is I wanna adjust the camera focal distance and the aperture. So since we're really close to the table, this aperture is gonna be pretty high. I'm gonna go as far as to say it's probably like like 80 um, pixels. And I'm gonna bring in this focal distance until this image is in, is in complete view or in complete focus. So like right there is a good spot to start. Maybe 80 is too high, maybe 70. And one thing I should also do here is open this up and under iris shape, I'm gonna increase this to like hexagon because the fast rectangle is just a little bit um, crummy, crummy looking. So let's increase that. So now let's scrub through here, come to the end, increase the focal distance. So that layer is in focus. If it's hard to tell, again, you might need to go to full full mode, but also if you change this view to, um, I think it's top, you could see exactly where the focal point is and let's bring that out and make sure that's perfect. Go back to the active camera and that's basically perfect. So now we should be able to scrub through this and the focal distance should all change. And actually it will basically be tracking this, this table in essence. So all of these people and photos should become in focus at some point. And now I'm gonna set the table dressings for the other side. And last thing I'm going to do is now just change the position of the light. Again, hit Control S to save all the time so that way it never crashes. So now spotlight, 
I'm just gonna open this up and set a keyframe for, let's see, maybe point of interest and position. Hit U on the keyboard, hit U on the keyboard, K on the keyboard to bounce to the end. And whoa, our light is crazy in weird spots. So again, let's just go to the four view and we can much better see where our light is. So our position is there. We basically want to take this light and I'm gonna again, or I'm going to, let's see, maybe move the light over. So the light is basically right on top of this layer and the focal position should basically be the logo. So pretty much I just moved the light and moved the focal point. Oh man, it looks like I messed up the original focal point and the original light position. So no problem, we could fix that. So I'm just setting these back to 960 by 540, which is I think where it started. And so that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna add some smoothing here with this Mount MoGraph tool. It actually turned out I never changed the aperture, so I'm just gonna uncheck that keyframe. And I'm going to add just some smoothing here. You could of course just use the graph editor, but man, to go through each one of these to make sure it was correct, that'd be a nightmare. I just use Mount MoGraph. They don't sponsor this video, it's just, I use it all the time. So let's go ahead and scrub through this and see. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. Cool, the cool thing about once this is set up for different clients, you could just come in here and just change these photos and it will change in the main composition, which is super helpful. And you could just move them around, change the, the table. Obviously this one's marble, so it's white but you could change the table to wood or, or whatever suits the look that you're going for. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. Check out the other videos on this channel. Um, head to our Patreon account if you wanna download this project file. And I'm just gonna show you how I did the photos now for those of you that were curious. Um, let's jump into the first photo here, which is based on, one, on the original, which, so this is the original photo and this is what we did to it. Not a whole lot um, here. We didn't use Photoshop. We just did everything in After Effects, changes to full. Um, so the first thing is, is I have my photo. Second up, I have an adjustment layer that I actually had turned off. But when I do this, sometimes you're dealing with a lot of vintage photos and they all have slightly different tonality to them, some some colorimetry to the paper and stuff that they make, they all, they all look different. And sometimes that looks a little bit off. So I'll just add a tint sometimes to add like, you know, in this case, a little bit of yellow to the white. Um, and in other cases, kind of make all the photos look the same. The next thing I did was I added the border around the image and I added this kind of folded paper art. So what I did was I set this to multiply. So you can see when it's on normal, it just looks like that. I set it to multiply. And for the text up here, I just have a couple handwritten notes. So I basically wrote this down, took a picture, um, brought it into After Effects. Handwriting, you can never beat it. It always, you could always tell it's handwritten. No fonts can, can match handwritten. Um, basically what I did was I created a mask around the layer, added a feather to that mask. You can see here. It was originally set to normal, but um, I added a curves adjustment to it. I change the, the blending mode to multiply. And that's as simple as that. And so it's very clearly handwritten and it just adds a lot of really cool texture to the image. For photo number two, I just added the border. Photo three and four and five, I didn't really do anything except for photo four, I did add a crease as well as why are we here? Again, another um, scanned image. I added a curves adjustment. So originally it looked like that when it was set to normal. So I added a curves adjustment and I set it to multiply. And there it looks just like somebody wrote on this photograph. And so pretty much that's it. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, check out other videos on this channel. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.